Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and this is our first run review of the Adidas Ultra Boost 21. start with some of the key stats of the shoe and the price which is £160 in the UK and $180 in the US. The shoe has a 10mm drop from heel to toe, it's 30.5mm stack at the heel and then 20.5mm at the toe. Going to the weight, this is a heavy shoe, uh, Adidas kind of lists it at 340 grams of the UK 8.5 but having weighed my UK 9 it comes in at 361 grams which is 12.7 ounces, you know that's a big beefy shoe and a pretty big rise even on the Ultra Boost 20 which was 346 grams in my size, so yeah, heavy shoe. Okay, we'll begin on the design front with the upper, which is AS's Prime Knit Plus, um, which is I think 50% made with Prime Blue yarn, which is itself 75% um, recycled, something like that. So there's some sustainability stuff there. Always good. I'd like to see more and more of that in shoes, obviously. Um, the actual upper is knit with some kind of reinforced sections, so to try and counter some of the problems of knitted uppers if you kind of foot sliding around, especially on sharp corners. It's a kind of booty style, and it's got this kind of big tab here, which always makes me wear very long socks to make sure my Achilles doesn't get any rubbing. There's a decent amount of padding there to kind of protect that. Um, and of course, you've got the Ultra Boost cage, kind of plastic cage around the midfoot. Um, I guess <laughs> lots of people have tried Ultra Boost by now, I know this is annoying or not. Um, on my kind of first run, I did feel it a little bit on my left foot, but in the past, I've usually been okay with Ultra Boost shoes, not getting too much rubbing from the cage when I've kind of sorted out the laces correctly. Let's go into the midsole, which, and obviously, we need to start with this. This chunky fellow here, this um, exaggerated heel, which is just full of Adidas's Boost foam. The so Boost is kind of still Adidas's signature foam, um, although obviously Light Strike and Light Strike Pro and shoes like the Adios Pro is starting to become much more popular in their faster shoes. Um, right now, the Ultra Boost is still all about the Boost. There's six percent more Boost foam in this shoe than ever before. Um, now that doesn't sound like much, but actually the Ultra Boost 20 was already had a lot of boost so uh, to have six percent more is obviously where the weight's coming from and you can see where it's gone with this big chunky heel has that slight kind of swallow design you're seeing on lots of shoes these days to try and build into a kind of rocker idea and key to that on this shoe is the um, LEP linear energy push system which is broadly uh, this kind of yellow shank you'll see on the foot it's got kind of two prongs and then two prongs running up the forefoot either is to kind of add some snap to the kind of midfoot to toe off section of your foot stride um, and it definitely is noticeable actually I, I on the run I'd completely forgotten about this LEP system because it's one of those things you read about in blurbs and forget about but on the run I was thinking oh there's actually a bit bit more here under the forefoot I feel like a bit, bit more kind of push here to, to the shoe especially considering there is a shoe really designed for just easy miles it's fair to say also, it does create a kind of mild rocker effect, and uh, I think that's really important when you're getting shoes of this weight, this kind of high stack. Uh, they can be very clunky if you don't have that some kind of roll through to kind of to get you off your toes, rather than just kind of landing with a huge slab of just massive slab of foam. Uh, another thing on the upper we should mention actually is this heel counter, which uh, is a bit different to the ones on the previous Ultra Boost models, which kind of have a cutout design, but it still creates good stability around the heel and it's got very wide forefoot again to encourage stability despite the stack height. No problems on that front on the run for me. On the outsole, we have a slightly different uh, kind of design here to what the classic Ultra Boost is in terms of the actual pattern. And again, there's kind of crystal rubber used rather than the kind of this quite standard traditional continental rubber um, the kind of blown rubber that was always on the other um, ultra boost models uh, didn't really notice too much difference on the run so far the grip is still exceptional um, Adidas's shoes with the continental rubber outsoles have always been really really impressive on this front I was running in the kind of a snowy day exactly what I wanted the shoe for no problems with grip at all durability I expect to be excellent as well and the durability of the, both the outsole and the midsole that's one thing that ultra boost shoes Will do, they will just last forever uh, because Boost Foam and Continental Rubber are both very hard wearing. Uh, it comes to the fit, uh, it's true to size for me. Uh, as always with kind of this kind of sock booty design, you know, you want it to be quite snug, especially at the start. I always expect it to loosen slightly over time, but yeah, I had no problems with the fit at all. Slipped it on, very comfortable. Um, only like slight on I had actually on the run was a slight bit of irritation from the cage after about an hour and a half, but I think I could have adjusted it the laces and it wouldn't have been a problem. Um, so we'll, I'll look into that more on the coming runs, but yeah, not really any problems on that front. 
So just off to do my first run in the Adidas Ultra Boost 21. It's absolutely horrible conditions. It's windy, snowy. I don't know. I get to wear a hat for one of my very rare occasions each year. Um, just going to do a fairly easy run today, given the conditions. It's kind of my Sunday long run. It's going to be 90 minutes, um, running fairly easily on feel, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the shoe is. So we just take a quick break, 55 minutes in, run about 13k. And so far the shoes have been a pleasant surprise. They are ridiculously heavy shoes, but they don't feel it actually on the run. Uh, I was taking quite easy today and they are no longer, um, you can see they're no longer white, but, but the weather's not as bad. We're now with the wind at our back, so that's good. But yeah, so far, reasonably enjoyable shoe for this kind of easy running. It all done um just about 21.7k in around hour and a half uh, very comfortable nice easy day out there horrible weather that's why i'm filming this in my porch instead of outside um yes yeah, few notes on the shoes first of all you definitely i was impressed that they don't feel like a 360 gram shoe um they roll through quite nicely uh they're comfortable at that kind of easy cruising pace definitely uh, a shoe i think that you could eat up a lot of miles and didn't really kind of push the pace today at all but you know, it's a decent amount of feel for the ground under the forefoot um i'll try some faster stuff in them the weight i think will count against them there but you know they're, yeah, they're reasonably uh responsive you know it's boost foam has always been quite nice on that front i think even with a huge stack like this I do think the kind of rocker stuff in there is good and improvement on the shoe compared to the previous ultra Booster, the 20 uh, which felt a bit more flat footed um grip is always excellent on these shoes uh, adidas continental rubber one reason i thought i'd use them today in the kind of snow out there was it was good uh the kind of cage uh, i did notice a bit of irritation from the midfoot cage on my left foot towards the end of the run it's always something that might come up with ultra boost with that kind of cage on there but yeah all in all this kind of run is bread and butter it's exactly the kind of thing i'd expect to do in a shoe and they perform pretty well on it um yeah you could eat up miles in the shoe um and we'll see how they do on some pacier stuff down the line Early verdict on the shoe. Um, obviously just done that one run and I've really done a run that fits right in the wheelhouse of the Ultra Boost 21, which is a long, easy run where the kind of big slab of cushioning, kind of protection, that kind of rocker design uh, from the linear, the LEP system, really does contribute to a very nice feeling on the run and it ran far lighter than I was expecting it to. No concerns about the weight when I was cruising along at that easy pace. And yeah, I think it's gonna be a good shoe for that and I expect it to be really durable on that front. I also think Ultra Boost shoes have had a little bit of a bad rap, unfairly, uh, because they obviously are quite stylish shoes as well as being road running shoes. They kind of you know blur the boundary between a lifestyle and a running shoe. But Boost Foam does do the job and it's durable and it's comfortable and I've done lots of miles in Ultra Boost shoes in the past. Um, and yeah, it is just a bit heavy compared to a lot of modern day foams, but on the run you don't feel that too much. I will really be interested to see how that does on pacey sessions. Obviously you've got that, that kind of the shank there to try and encourage a slightly pacey or responsive feel in the forefoot, but at the end of the day it's a 360 gram shoe. Uh, I'm not expecting to set any um, PBs you know, in my track sessions trying to run in the shoe, but I will give it a go and we'll see what it's like. Because obviously there are some easy day shoes out there that are quite versatile. Um, and, you know, I actually did a session in the Nike Infinity Run 2 the other day and it was pretty impressive on that front. Um, I've had decent success with Saucony's Triumph shoes, which actually feel very similar to this in the past, using them for fast stuff as well as kind of easy stuff. So obviously if there's no versatility at all, that does impact on how attractive the Ultra Boost 21 is going to be as a shoe. Uh, it's, it's not really not a soft ride despite all that cushioning i think it's um important to say like like something like asics and overblast is much more bouncy uh the brooks brooks glycerin line is much more cushy much more plush it's reasonably firm still um and you know boost doesn't really soften a lot over time i found like it's just because it is so durable like you have to quite like that kind of firm firm feel it's not at all harsh i should say that it's not like a, it's not going to beat up your legs at all it does protect them you do get a decent bit of bounce and you know it's um it's a nice shoe, definitely for logging long runs like I did today. And um, but yeah, I, you know, you not don't look at that and think you're going to be, you know, stepping into a like Hocker's classic run on cloud style thing, anything like that. It's you know, it's a reasonably firm shoe, but with a nice kind of reasonably light feel to it, despite that huge weight.
comparing it to my initial comparisons to the previous models, um, I you know I quite like the Ultra Boost Twenty. The Ultra Boost Nineteen was fine. I kind of preferred the older Ultra Boost model just because of the design, really. But this kind of swallow design and the Lina and the LEP system, I do think, have created. There always was torsion systems in Adidas issues, but I think this is a slight step up in terms of how much they put into it. And it did feel a bit lighter on the run than the Ultra Boost Twenty, despite being a heavier shoe. It, uh, I guess the Ultra pretty felt just slightly more flat-footed, I guess is how I describe it. Um, despite still being a good shoe for easy running, this feels just slightly more nimble again, despite that, which is impressive. Obviously, it's a very expensive shoe. It's £160, $180. Uh, I think, you know, it is going to be a durable shoe. You're going to be able to put a lot of running in it, but for it to be value for money, I always feel like with the Ultra Boost, you have to really like the design and actually want to use it when you're not running as well. That is one advantage of this line of shoes is we don't often talk about looks because they're not really relevant most of the time, but... Um, Ultra Boost is durable enough and good looking enough that you can wear it all the time, you know, and that is a factor when you're considering buying a pair of shoes. When I was looking, when I, on the pre, the older Ultra Boost models, which I still wear as my kind of walking around shoes with the kind of slightly more understated design, we'll call it that, I used to take them away all the time as my kind of, you know, walking around the holiday, but also good running shoes because they did have that kind of versatility where you're not obviously wearing a running shoe when you're not running. Um... You might think none of that matters, you just want the best running shoe in the world. <laughs> um, fair enough, but if you're spending £160 and you get a shoe that you can wear all the time as well as running, then that does you know create a little bit more value there for that price tag. Um, in terms of pure running performance, there are a lot of shoes in this category. They're like really comfy, easy day cruiser, and there's a lot out there that are really good. I do like the Nike Infinity Run, uh, like the Asics Nova Blast. Saucony Endorphin Shift, we've just reviewed, it's a pretty good shoe on this front as well. Similarly big stack with a kind of rocker effect. And then there's going to be some slightly more cushy, bouncy stuff like, you know, the Nike Invincibles coming out with Zoom X foam that should be very, very soft. Um, Asics Snow Boss, like I say, is a bit more bouncy. So there's lots of options here. So we, I'll be comparing those all to um, the Ultra Boost 21 in the full review down the line with a bit more detail. Obviously, I've only done the one run so far. But I think what you can say after one run is my fears was this is going to be a real clunker of a shoe. And it, it isn't at all. Like if you're using it for the run like today, a long run, hour and a half easy. That's its bread and butter and it performed beautifully. We'll see how it does on some other runs and we'll let you know in the full review. Thanks very much guys, that is our first run kind of impressions of the Ultra Boost 21. Let us know in the comments if you're interested to hear more about the shoe, kind of like uh, have you run an Ultra Boost in the past? Do you think they're good running shoes or are they pure fashion shoes that we shouldn't even be bothering with? Um, <laughs> let us know in the comments, uh, like, subscribe, ring the little bell so you get notified when we launch another video and yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.